2020 Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg wrapped up the final event of his bus tour in Iowa this week. Speaking in Davenport, the South Bend, Indiana mayor addressed the impeachment probe of President Trump and what he believes it represents. Look, honestly, politically, I don't think it'll make much of a difference. I think politically, people have made up their minds about this president. Um, but I think morally, it matters. Because it matters to send a message that nobody is above the law. The person who has made the most convincing, consistent, and energetic argument in favor of impeachment is the president himself. Buttigieg used his bus tour as a way to connect with voters, but it was also an opportunity to speak openly with members of the press. Our Ed O'Keefe spoke with him about his personal life, politics, and his proposed health care plan. Now, as I understand it, your plan would automatically enroll people in a public option if, if they're eligible. That's right, if you don't have private coverage. Should they be forced to do that, though? Well, we need to make sure that everybody has coverage because otherwise that creates a cost to the system. Uh, when you go into an emergency room and you don't have coverage, uh, somebody is picking that up. And it's usually a combination of crushing medical bills and debt for the patient and or a hospital uh, absorbing that cost. This way, that can't happen. You can't fall through the cracks. And that benefits all of us and helps keep costs under control. In recent days, you and some others have been calling out Elizabeth Warren for the fact that she will not admit that her Medicare for All plan would require a tax increase for middle class Americans. Does your plan require a tax increase for middle class Americans? No. We can fund what I am proposing without raising taxes on any but perhaps the top 2%. Now, I do believe that our tax code needs to be fair. There are corporations and very wealthy Americans who should be paying their fair share and aren't. And we're going to adjust that, not just in order to fund our health care plan, but in order to fund the needs of this country. Uh, it's not punitive. Uh, it's not unreasonable. It's just what we need in order to make sure that we can move forward as a country. You're still struggling to build support among black and Latino voters in, in this country. Um, if they get asked about you or they see you and they think, oh, you know, interesting that he's young, interesting that he's a military veteran, but, you know, the white guy, he doesn't understand our situation. And there was a police shooting in his town, just like there is in every other city in this country. I don't know. There's got to be somebody better than that. What's your argument to them? Why should they be looking at you right now as a potential president? Well, uh, each candidate brings a different experience and a different story forward. Um, I don't have the experience of being a black American. I don't have the experience of uh, talking to a teenage son about what to do when you were pulled over by a police officer. Uh, I can assume if I am uh, walking in a department store and I'm fidgeting with something in my pocket that uh, I will be given the benefit of the doubt and not followed. Uh, I don't have those personal experiences, but I do have the experience of belonging to a group that has been feared, hated, and denied opportunity in this country. And while those aren't the same, it's one of the reasons I'm powerfully motivated to ensure that nobody is denied opportunity in this country because of who they are. You are uh, a gay man. You are now ranked at least fourth in Iowa, and you're doing pretty well nationally. Has the history or the historic nature of what you're doing set in yet? It's certainly moving when people of different ages come up to me at campaign events, uh, high schoolers who let me know that uh, I've made it easier for them to get through their day, um, people my parents' age with tears in their eyes who uh, did not think a, something like this was ever going to be possible in their lifetime. And so I'm very conscious that, uh, that there's a historic quality to this campaign. And at the same time, it's important to me that no one element of, of my story define me. Uh, this is part of who I am, just like the fact that I'm a veteran and the fact that I'm a mayor, the fact that I'm young, and the fact that I come from northern Indiana. And taken together, they add up to a story that I hope explains why I am motivated to lead America into a new sense of belonging as well as a better set of policies for our future. Is Iowa must win? I think we got to do well here. I think that definition will become a little clearer in the winter time. But uh, yes, we've got to do well in Iowa. Look, first of all, the best way to settle any question about electability is to win an election somewhere. Uh, secondly, Iowa is a very good place for us to campaign. Uh, it reminds me of home. It's got a similar feel. And because of the way the caucuses work, it really puts a premium on the relationships that only a well-organized team can build. And we've got a team that is developing a reputation for being uh, great to work with, having a nice touch. We're very proud of that. You're a millennial. I'm a millennial. You know the knock on millennials from older people. 
Um, is that fair? I mean, what, what, what is it that they're getting wrong about our generation? Well, I'm not sure that everybody understands how hardworking people are in this generation. And uh, they'll definitely be seeing how hardworking I am just by virtue of the way this campaign unfolds. And the same is true for everybody on our team. Uh, I will say, though, I've actually been struck by how many people of the boomer generation come up to me on rope lines and talk about their enthusiasm for generational leadership. Now, one of the characteristics that every winning Democrat has had, from Clinton through Beck, uh, uh, through uh, Carter and to JFK and Obama, too, uh, is representing a new generation coming from not having been in Washington for too long. And uh, I think folks are ready for that in the party and in the country.